So uh, I guess I'll get started. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, a project that I've been working on, um, a bit of a personal project and you know, motivated by something my company's been working on um, with one of our clients, um, which is handling event registration. Um, this is something that Drupal uh, 8 hasn't really handled well. Um, you know, there are modules for it. We'll talk about some of the options um, in a little bit. But you know, this is this is an approach that we're taking, um, or hoping to take with a, a client, um, an active project that we're working on. You don't have a microphone. Uh, the microphone wasn't working in here earlier. Yeah, yeah it's tied to the other room. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you can't hear me, just scream. <laughs> um, I I defer to Brian. So <laughs> Brian's a. Um, so uh, I'm Rich Curtis. I'm a lead developer at Unleash Technologies. Um, here's my email, um, and I'm Rich Curtis on Drupal.org and wow. GitHub. Um, and then my company's uh, Unleash Technologies, um, and that's our, our URL. Uh, I'm allowed to come here today on a work day, so I'm supposed to tell you that we're hiring. If you, <laughs> anyone's interested, but uh, you know, um, on what you're all interested on event registration. So. There's a lot of challenges here. Um, you know, there's there's some options. The the thing that we're working on is not only event registration, but actually signing up and registering for those events through Drupal, through a front end interface where you know I have to make payments for tickets um, and that kind of stuff. So uh, the project that I'm working on, you know, this this module that I'm talking about today um, is something that it was envisioned, you know, late last year um, based on seeing problems with how we built, um, you know, a client site and, you know, trying to make improvements, you know, a, no project's perfect the first time around. Um, so, you know, early this year we've been planning to talk about sort of how we'd approach it. Uh, and, you know, I started the initial, you know, dev work, you know, trying to figure out the, the how the entity types would go together, how, you know, Drupal's interface would work. Um, in April, um, just before DrupalCon, went to DrupalCon, talked to some people. They liked the idea. They thought, you know, there's, there's some places that, you know, they could use it. Um, you know, some of those examples were other Drupal camps, uh, or, uh, coordinators that, you know, I talked to. Um, and, and, and ultimately now we're, we're in May. Um, I've, we've done some work on the code for this, um, but it's still very much um, in development. So the objectives here are to provide a system for, you know, event registration through Drupal um, that's both, you know, free events, you know, something that you might sign up for, um, you know, just to say, oh, I'm going to this, or that's a free public event, you know, um, as well as paid events, you know, that you might require purchasing through Drupal Commerce, complete with, you know, pricing, carts, checkout, um, you know, we want to know who's coming to those events, you know, what their name is, you know, if they're affiliated with an organization, who they are, um, you know, potentially also other things, not just guests, but if your organization is sponsoring an event, being able to make that experience something you might be able to complete virtually. Um, you know, having a group or, or an entity type that you can actually register um, with during the interface, you know, setting up, oh, I'm, you know, oh, a company sponsoring Drupal, a Drupal camp, you know, saying, oh, I want to sponsor it for, you know, $200 or $1,000, whatever that tier is, and providing those as packages, as well as, um, you know, offering variable costs. Um, Drupal's done this in the case of, you know, uh, early event registrations, you know, the early bird discounts, um, you know, also providing sponsorship and scholarships to, to different things that you might apply for as a user, um, you know, based on who you are, um, so roles and, and different information inside the system. And commerce, you know, when it comes to pricing, um, you know, it, it handles pricing, it handles orders um, pretty well. Um, the one thing that, you know, the last piece of this is, is check-in and actually, you know, management of, event, of attendees. So if you can figure out who ordered stuff and collect their information. You can export that into a CSV to import into a mailing system. Or, you know, it would be great to even, you know, check in people into the event, um, you know, through the Drupal web interface for smaller organizations, you know, open up the admin panel and say, these people arrived, um, you know, maybe you're running a class, actually tracking attendance, you know, and being able to, to report on that information with views would be a powerful feature. So there's a couple of use cases. I mentioned, you know, Drupal camps, uh, potentially DrupalCon, um, you know, for, for organizations like Princeton, um, you know, they talked about this morning a little bit about the, the different kinds of events they have. Some of those, I'm sure, could benefit from, you know, a robust system. Um, you know, classes and trainings are, are places where this could, could work, you know, paying for, for training, 
um, not necessarily Drupal related, but you know, say you run a yoga studio and you want to have a class, you know, being able to track registration that way. Um, and then both, of course, um, and also potentially the need for you know sports events and you know if you're a local soccer team collecting money for you know uh, seats or something at, at your championship event, you know that might be an option. Um, and, and one of the, the conceptual things that I've been kicking around in my head while trying to craft this is the concept of like a a band competition, um, thinking more like Battle of the Bands event where you know the bands like register for a small fee, you win something at the end, but you want to track both tickets to attend as individuals and bands participating um, in the competition. Um, so the main motivation here um, is a couple of factors. Um, you know, this, this mod project is mostly motivated by a site we built with our, one of our clients. Um, and the thing about the site is that it, it, in order to integrate commerce with the site and handle all the registrations, it became very complicated. Um, so one of the sentiments you know that I take away from what what Dries had in his Dries note at DrupalCon was that we're trying to build a platform for ambitious site builders. This means that we as developers need to figure out how to build things that are simple enough to set up that don't require extensive configuration that you can you know enable a module, enable commerce, and get this sort of system without requiring development. Um, so. The, the example that we're, we're building this off of is my company, um, we're a digital agency, um, and one of our, well, we have three clients that are um, state professional organizations, and those organizations have, you know, around 60,000 members, um, and they track, you know, professional certifications, training, you know, credits um, for those, those organizations. So they have Drupal Commerce for, you know, tracking and handling memberships, uh, registrations and renewals. Um, you know, purchasing online resources as well as their event registration. Um, and it's a pretty extensive system. You know, those, those 60,000 members have to, and that's across, you know, 60,000 per event, so, or per organization, so, you know, they're pretty active. Um, and there's not just one course they're attending each year. They're typically attending um, somewhere, you know, at one to three credits each, somewhere between four to ten, um, you know, trainings um, or, or purchasing, you know, online material for, for up to like 10 events per year. Um, so, you know, they operate somewhere between 50 and 60 events per, you know, in-person events was pre-COVID. Some of those events have now moved to hybrid events. So um, needing to handle virtual conference spaces, you know, Zoom meetings um, or uh, LMS platforms that they need to integrate with. Um, and types of events that they have, you know, are trainings, conferences, summits, um, as well as job fairs, um, since a professional organization trying to recruit, you know, or, you know, people at, at events, as well as running their own, you know, offering potential students and, you know, to exposing them to their potential uh, firms that they might work for. Um, and some events, you know, a thousand events is, you know, typical for, for one of their larger um, events. Um, you know, some of them are virtual at 700, you know, so there's this lot going on within their site, so keeping track of information and making sure it's accurate and working well is, is key for their, you know, event operation and, and you know, success of their organization. So out of this to come two requirements, you know, one is to sort of manage um, both in-person and virtual um, events. Um, and the second thing is to uh, handle e-commerce. That was the, the main key and the, the main challenge that we've had. So that brings up the question of how do you do all of this? And, as a developer, we oftentimes don't want to do something ourselves, right? We want to build off something. Um, so the first thing we look towards is existing modules. And the event registration space um, has some options. Um, the first one, which uh, I'll go a little bit more into detail um, about later, is events and registration, or RNG is the project name on Drupal.org. And this is a pretty extensive system, but it only really provides um, registration and attendee management um, it also has some, you know, set standards that it sets in place about how that all works. Um, it also provides, it does provide an email system, so you can actually, you know, both email and communicate with your attendees, um, and some complicated um, functionality around, you know, who can register for events and what those rules look like, um, you know. But it doesn't provide commerce integration. It's, it's kind of lacking in that area. Um, the second major module that you find in the Drupal community is the registration module. Um, this module, the downside of it is it's only for Drupal 7, um, but it does a pretty good job of handling, you know, the same kind of data. It 
leverages any entity type, you know, just attach an entity type or content type, and then lets you attach registrations to it. Um, it has some functionality around access control, um, views integrations, and there are actually two modules that integrate it with commerce. So, you know, this, this would be ideal, but we're lacking the Drupal 8, you know, support for this module, um, you know, so that's a challenge. So I said, mentioned that we built this based on a, a client project, um, you know, so the background there is that we built this a couple of years ago. Um, we actually built it using the RNG module. Uh, it was in 2018, and it worked pretty well. But there are some issues with the way we built it. So we're reconsidering, you know, how how that project's built and trying to improve upon the solution that we're providing. And so RNG works great; it tracks attendees. Um, that system works pretty well. Um, but the commerce wraparound that we had to write a significant amount of custom code. Um, in order to make that all work. Uh, there isn't an idea of an event within commerce. There's no way to register for events, right? So we, in the implementation, leveraged the product uh, module, the commerce products module, um, you know, the idea of a product being, you know, we had a product type for events, and then, you know, we used variations to represent the ticket types, you know, to let users register for different tiers of tickets as well as potentially add-on sessions. Um, it worked. You know, that system, you know, because of how commerce works, it works well enough for the checkout and, and system, but we had to put a ton of custom code to glue together that system with event registrations. That includes um, updates to the checkout flow, um, generation of event registrations within the RNG modules entity system um, once, you know, checkout was completed, populating that with user information. Um, so there's a lot of, of functionality there that was lacking that we had to write custom. Um, and the challenge with this was that we, you know, wrote it the first time as a, you know, hopefully it's a one-off, and then we built, um, you know, we, we, the professional organization, one of them came to us, we built their site, and then another state, or another two other states came to us, and they're like, oh, we, we want sites too. And, you know, that custom code had to be refactored and adjusted. And, you know, this huge maintenance burden on maintaining code that you have rewritten, um, especially because we you know, have to you know, upgrade the old site to work with the new system. Um, you know, so the motivation here is to you know, figure out a better way. And the, the big question is, did it work the old way? Yes, it did. Did it work well? Not really. Um, you know, the limitations came around the amount of custom code. So the commerce integration wasn't perfect. Um, there's heavy reliance on an external uh, association management system for tracking data. Um, so everything within commerce had to be synced up to there. The event registrations really were synchronized with the, the AMS and not so much with commerce. And, you know, the heavy reliance on the external data was, you know, a challenge because we had to sync information to and from the AMS system. And ultimately event registrations, there were some limitations around the way the data was managed and the, the structure and expectations of their relationships that really didn't fit our, our needs. Um, and that's because it's trying to provide a full registration system and we really just need the idea of, you know, we wanted to be able to to extend that in ways that, you know, we were kind of felt boxed in, especially with, you know, trying to duplicate the code uh, three times um, or, or reuse the code across multiple projects. Um, so the question there, right, ends up being, do you, do you take that existing code base and try to clean up what's giving you problems or do you you know, start from the ground up and, and rebuild entirely. So this module that I'm working on is more of a proof of concept, you know, building that out, making sure that works, and then we're going to, you know, put it into the site and actually move from the RNG module to a new system that integrates better with commerce and that requires less custom code on a site level. The idea being, you know, an editor should be able to go in and add, you know, information, automate that process without, you know, the involvement of a developer if possible. So the, the main factors that we um, had for making that decision, yeah, were the complexity of the integration. Um, as a result of how complicated it is, you know, any move, maintaining that code, keeping it working um, was going to be a challenge. And the key portions of at least the, the first site we're working with um, don't rely heavily on RNG for displaying, you know, access control to information. Um, there's, there's still a heavy reliance on the external AMS system for what events are you registered for in certain areas of the site, as opposed to that information coming from RNG, 
while RNG just handles, you know, once you're trying to view an event, you know, do you actually have access? But links that get generated in different parts of the UI are, are happening based on the external data, which is totally not ideal. Um, so there's a lot of rework that we were going to have to do to the existing integration. Um, and we figured it was a great time to rethink, you know, the way it all sort of plays together. Um, you know, the third factor is, is they're a professional organization, they're a not-for-profit, you know, they, they might not be a 501c3, but they, they're not looking to make money. Um, as a result, they have a small budget. Um, so when we looked at the existing solution and the problems with it, you know, we're kind of balancing, um, is this worth them spending their money on, right, um, and to keep maintaining. Uh, so what we're, we're doing as a company is, you know, taking a step back and actually seeing, you know, they're not the only organization, the three, the three professional organizations are not the only organizations that we have event registration with um, and that could leverage this functionality if done well um, and done effectively. So we're taking a step back trying to rethink how this is done so that it can apply to not only them but other projects that, that we maintain. Um, so if at first you don't succeed, try again. Um, and the first thing we did is say, let's take a look at something, you know, options out there and see if something already exists. I love this XKCD comic, it's one of my favorites. Uh, the question you know, there's 14 ways to do something. Well, let's, let's make a 15th way and everyone will adopt it. Well, now there's 15 ways. <laughs> Great. So we decided to take the events module, right? You know, the, the question here and the decision here is around how do you handle data management within Drupal, right? There's this sentiment where everything's a bundle of a uh, content type, right? But to an extent, there's certain pieces of information that, you know, are too extensive for that. In the case of event management, um, the decision we came across was that with an event, you would need, you know, a conference content type, you need a session content type, you need summit content types, and, you know, we basically be putting together a ton of extra content types and adding those to the node system, and it's harder to manage events and, and integrate with that when you have multiple bundles of, of, of nodes where, you know, if you can just say, oh, if it's an event, add this feature to that event, as opposed to if it's a, a node with one of these four bundles. Um, so we, we chose the event module. Um, this module is, you know, trip module on Drupal.org. It's fairly simple. It provides, you know, event types um, and, you know, entities for representing those, their fields. You can customize all of that, um, as well as a, a group, in a group module integration. So that provides support for um, different ownership of, of events based on the group as well as visibility of those events based on the group. So a group could host an event, um, you know, if you have, say, a club website, right, that manages clubs for your organization, maybe a university or a school, you know, a group could host their, um, you know, meeting using event registration um, and theoretically and, you know, track who's coming to that event um, using that system. Now, the problem with this event module is that it only does events. It doesn't do anything beyond that. Um, it doesn't support have a registration system. It doesn't have commerce integration. Um, so, you know, that's the, the missing piece here. So, unfortunately, I did have to introduce that 15th, or 15th standard um, by creating a new module. Um, but hopefully it's a good thing. Um, hopefully this will be a, a module that we can actually move to as opposed to having 15 versions of. Um, and I'm actually introducing two new modules. The first one is to handle registration, um, that being who's coming to the event, um, who they are, whether they're sponsors, vendors, volunteers, check-ins, all that kind of stuff related to you know your your attendance of the event. The other half is the ticketing and an e-commerce portion, which handles um, how you actually you know register for the event. So free events don't actually need ticketing. Um, so I chose to split those out um, since that might not be necessary in all sites. Um, and the ticket system is, you know, uh, so for, for registrations, that'd be registration types to represent different types of users, um, and potentially not necessarily users, but groups and organizations, um, potentially, um, the idea would be to allow you to register any entity, um, you know, at the, uh, registration entity type has a dynamic field for the registered and or for the referenced entity, right? So it wraps another entity, um, and that's a dynamic entity reference. So you can pick whether that's a user, whether that's a group, whether that's, you know, a node, um, if you choose to use nodes to represent organizations in your site already. Um, and then the second half of that is ticketing, and that's, you know, ticket types, whether you're, you know, 
a sponsor um, and paying a certain fee as a sponsor or whether you're an individual person, maybe you are an individual sponsor and that costs a little bit more and you get some benefits out of that um, and wanting to track those different tiers. Um, and then through the ticketing system, there's a, not a tied dependency, but commerce lets you depend on commerce for pricing, but not handle the orders and payments. So that module also supports and provides the necessary functionality for orders and checkout. Um, and the main piece of that being that during the checkout process, collecting that attendee information and actually, you know, generating that registration is the result of the checkout process. So as I said, the, the event registration module, um, you know, it's tracking who's coming, um, the dynamic entity reference, you know, letting you pick any entity that you're referencing um, and load that via, you know, a field relationship. Um, the goal here is to, you know, provide check-in, attendance, reporting, views. It doesn't require commerce, so it in and of itself could be used independently. Um, using permissions, you'd be able to register for events, maybe different types of registrations. You know, you could have different types of individuals track volunteers for free without requiring, you know, the, the commerce integration. Um, the second half of, of the ticketing, obviously, um, as I already said, you know, it's checkouts, checkout cards, pricing, um, the representation of tickets. Um, you don't actually need all of commerce to be enabled. Um, in order to use this, it just you know requires pricing, and then it's yeah it's how much you pay, um, what actually you get access to is you know what kind of registration are you. So the ticket represents what you're registering for. Um, so tickets, the event tickets is built on top of the event registration. So a, a ticket type would have an associated registration type. So if you pay for a certain tier, you get whatever uh, specified registration type um, along with that. Um, and then, yes, as, as part of this, we'd be generating the registration entities or uh, registration instances um, with the associated event. So the question, does it work well? Hopefully. Um, it's very much still in progress um, in development. Um, what's next? Um, it's kind of, you know, backwards slides. But my next thing to do is to, you know, release a stable version, or not stable, but a version of the module. Most of this code's been developed, you know, independently. Um, you know, it's sourced in Git, but it's not published on Drupal.org yet, um, because rethinking things. For example, the decision to split the two modules apart was something we made last week um, while evaluating, you know, the code and saying, started getting messy. The, the machine names for entity types were getting 30 characters long, and it's a bad idea. Um, so. Hopefully soon the, the two modules will be published um, on Drupal.org. I've reserved the namespaces, so I know what those will be called. Just have to push the code. Um, and you know, before that happens, my goal is to have some basic features um, as far as registration. Obviously, entity types, that's mostly finished, um, the build out of that. Um, and the checkout process is, is mostly complete. The one piece is missing is the actual step for um, generating the registration. The, the framework's there. I just have to finish you know, the, the form integration or form implementation, and then attendee management um, and check-in is something that I still have to work on um, on the registration side. So we track all the registration register, registered guests or attendees, um, but actually being able to report on those and views that are generated as well as sort, filter those, potentially export those. Um, obviously, it's be built on top of views, so you, know, you as a site builder can do a lot of stuff. You know, Enabling the CSV module lets you export those, but making sure all of the tools for the baseline tools for reporting and, and check-in um, is sort of the objective here. The second question is what's, you know, what's encompassed in this? There's a lot of information, events, and, and registration. Um, so some of these things are things that I hope to do. Some of these you know, are, are on the side of my mind as I'm thinking of building things that I want to be able to support. Um, so the key, the first thing is, is events like DrupalCon or, and DrupalCamp. We have events themselves as well as summits and trainings that might be additional add-on fees. So Obviously, you want to be able to register for both of those kind of things. So figuring out a way to make the UI work to, to handle that. Um, and I haven't figured out specifics on that, but likely some sort of sub-event system. Um, and then applying that to the, the sort of registration options list um, during checkout. Or um, you know, when you're viewing the event, during start registration, being able to check off what, what you're looking to do. Um, additionally, um, tracking attendance and, and, attend, uh, and ticket limits, right? You might, you know, for an event, have a certain number of seats in a room and, and only want a certain number of people. 
but you might be able to purchase from multiple different ticket types. So you have registration pools as well as you know ticket pools. Um, so maybe you only want you know 20, 20 individual sponsors, but they also get tickets. So you only you know have three hundred seats. So if you get two hundred and ninety regular attendees, you can only have ten sponsors. So there's a lot of mechanics around availability of events um, and you know registration types that we have to figure out. Um, and, and some of that is already powered by commerce, you know, availability, um, you know, or, or just the extensions on commerce for availability of tickets and pricing. Um, but the things we have to figure out um, in the long term for this to be successful. Uh, additionally, uh, ticket types and registration restrictions. So that means, you know, access control to an actual event, right? Do you do you have non-public events? You know, what does that really look like? Some of that's going to be handled by permissions. But you know something like a registration window, um, you know, preventing registration before a certain date um, for a certain ticket type, the ability to have early bird registrations um, only, you know, for a certain period and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there that could be added to the system. Um, and then additionally, access to event resources. So if you're registered and it's an online event, getting access to, you know, maybe a web page with information um, that might not be public. Um, as well as, you know, potentially access to uh, LMS system or, you know, not so much within Drupal building an LMS system, but getting a link so you can log in, um, you know, or be redirected to an external system and keeping those things, you know, protected from and only allowing registered users access to that information. Um, and of course, you know, the concept of a course or a multi-day event where, you know, you might want to register for a course um, this is something that might be a little bit out of scope for courses, might be a little bit out of scope for the base module, but making sure that the system supports that kind of thing where you can say, I want to register for, you know, if you're registering for a course and there's, it's five weeks on Tuesdays, each of those might be a meeting, you know, event in the system and they want to be wrapped as sort of a series that you can register for. Um, and then multi-day events, something like DrupalCon, being able to check in users to, to a multi-day event every morning. Um, figuring out how to best manage that kind of information. And then um, I mentioned before the concept of seat assignments. Um, you know, in a certain number of seats in this room, if you were coming to, you know, talk or performance, you might have to pick your seat ahead of time and preventing double registrations on seats as well as restricting access. Um, you know, so, you know, people don't double purchase seats. Um, so that's something that I'd like to figure at least a, a plan for. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that'll be built, but it's something to consider as part of, you know, the concept of restrictions on who's able to purchase tickets. And so additionally out of this, you know, while thinking about it, the two related modules, um, one of them is the places module. Um, and I, in the case of like event management, um, you know, Zoom meetings, those kind of things, um, the places module is, is, is fairly new module on Drupal.org. I don't think it has a stable release, but the idea, um, was to provide it an entity type that could be reused, um, in this case, a place. And it could be a Zoom meeting, it could be a physical location, um, but it would be a fieldable entity where you might have, you know, a location type place, which is, you know, has a physical address, while a Zoom meeting is just a text field um, with a title of a meeting um, or external integration to, you know, an LMS or something. Um, if this module, I think, is a work in progress. Um, the second module here, which is bundles and packages, the idea of purchasing um, you know, sponsoring an event, and as a result of sponsoring the event, getting a T-shirt um, or something, um, as well as getting a registration for a ticket. So, you know, it, your sponsorship isn't just a single ticket. It's really a lot more than that. So figuring out a way to manage bundles, and this wouldn't be something really specifically to events, but also potentially to um, commerce in general. So figuring out a way to, to bundle multiple different kinds of entities, both products within, you know, commerce as well as events, maybe membership registrations for, for an organization as well. Um, so, you know, those are just ideas that, you know, are kind of related, but may or may not cross over with, with this module. Um, so I think that's pretty much it, the, the general idea. Uh, anyone have any questions? Yeah? I have a, like, organizational question around integration with, like, attending, attending management platforms. Okay. Like, if there's, like, a plan for that, so right now... At the DOE Salesforce to track Absolutely. Um, over like longevity. Okay, so the, yeah, the question was around management of external management of attendees and, and tracking certainly. Um, I don't personally have a plan for that. I think 
you know, the, the Salesforce module in Drupal 8 is pretty robust. Um, you know, it would take some work, you know, in theory, but you could easily map, you know, the, the idea with a registration is that you would either reuse a user or an organization across multiple events, um, potentially with a, a profile to represent the contact information that might change. Uh, but the idea being, I think something of the Salesforce integration would be a better way to push that information to an external system. Um, as a larger question, how do you synchronize data? If someone's added to event manually in Salesforce, do you sync that back to Drupal? Um, there's a lot of questions there. And I think that would be out of scope for the project itself. Um, but I, I think you know within the Drupal community, um, it's my personal feeling that we need to revisit standardizing integrations. Um, you know, Salesforce does it one way. You know, you have feeds, but feeds only pulls data in. It doesn't push data out. So figuring out how best to trigger that synchronization, that record, is something that we, I think we as a community need to, to sit down and think about and, and actually, you know, explore the best way to, to handle that. I have a question just in terms, of, I guess maybe it's a step backward, like you were talking about. Um, where, where, where do you see this, um, obviously you're doing this model to do the registrations within Drupal and, and everything, but these association management software I assume also has registration systems. And, I, and back to the question of like Salesforce integration where there may be other things that the association or organization might be trying to do in terms of communicate with their people and just tying it all together. I guess, what's your sort of general opinion in terms of like where Drupal falls in within the overall um, sort of software that's being used to keep track of, of people and communicate with them? Absolutely. Um, so the question um, for the recording is, um, you know, how does how does this module play into something like an association management system or CRM, where you're tracking relationships and potentially, you know, to, as a follow-up question to tracking and, and potentially registering users through an external platform. Um, this is actually a good question because it's something that's sort of on our radar. And we do have to figure out this site. You know, the the organization does heavily use an AMS solution. Um, and that means also registering users in the AMS platform. And we've had some issues recently where the synchronization of data has been inconsistent, um, where users have uh, been registered manually in the AMS at the same time as they've registered in the web UI and conflicting records um, that have required you know, payment refunds and things like that. So um, you know, in this case, yes, we do heavily rely on an AMS. So I think that you know, I, the, the important part is figuring out that data synchronization piece. Um, you know, without a methodology to synchronize, synchronize data, you know, you're kind of stuck. And, and in our case with this site, the, the AMS solution is not one, you know, not a big name product. Um, it's, you know, pretty targeted to the um, professional organization. Um, I, I'm sure other organizations use it, but, you know, the, it's maintained custom. It's, it's shared by a number of different state level um, organizations from the same family. But they are, you know, it's very much customized to their workflows and data. So there's no standard integration module. Um, so as a result of that, you know, when building the site initially, we had to build a pretty extensive integration system which synchronizes data back and forth. That includes, you know, in the case of events, um, you know, the registrations, payments, you know, all of that data ends up in the AMS when you, you know, check out in commerce, you know, we send that data to the AMS so that they can report on you know, income, they can follow up on, you know, how often, you know, different things have happened, um, as well as if you're, you know, sponsoring the organization, if you're making a donation, those kind of things are tracked. So, um, as far as Drupal and how it fits into that portal, in our case, you know, this is the front end experience for the members of the organization. So, you know, they, their relationship with the, the um, professional society is entirely the website. Um, so they don't ever see the AMS. The AMS is only an administrative back end. It doesn't have a front end for users, um, unlike some platforms. So I think, you know, Drupal is critical um, in making sure that the information is critical or is exposed correctly um, and in a simple way. Uh, I know in the case of the AMS, you know, it's mostly something they use in the office and don't really use 
you know, at an event, they wouldn't go into the AMS to necessarily find a list of users because you know they have firewall rules and things around that. Um, so it wouldn't be ideal. So yeah, um, I think you know synchronization of the data is critical, and figuring out a way to do that effectively um, and standardizing that as much as possible is key. And I think you know the hard part right now, as I said about feeds, is that you know feeds is really designed for pulling in bulk data. It doesn't really do anything with you know fetch an update to this record um, or process an update to this record kind of uh, kind of mentality. So as a result of that, you know our AMS integration for this project is pretty custom, um, doesn't rely on anything like feeds. And that's where a lot of the complexity of the build comes out of is that we're mainly synchronizing these records. If there was a good subsystem within Drupal um, you know, for doing that, um, I think it would alleviate the burden, especially with adding on new platforms. Um, now, of course, a new platform that we don't know how the database works or you know, it's different API endpoints, you might have to write you know, a normalizer for that. Um, but thinking more about you know how we handle data, and especially in a world you know, and as we move forward, you know, I think companies are leveraging analytics and AMS system or you know CRM systems and, and those kind of things, marketing tools more and more. So figuring out how to transfer that information between Drupal and the back end or that data source um, is very critical. Nice. Yeah. Do you mind elaborating a little bit about those feeds? Like, how do you? If you're not using feeds, modules specifically, how do you integrate? A lot of custom code in this project. Okay. Um, so the approach that we usually take, you know, um, we Unleash Technologies does a lot of integrations, um, you know, for our clients, and we work with a lot of associations um, and, and you know those sort of professional societies um, and nonprofits. And you know, our approach generally is to sort of standardize. The API connection, um, much like you know, building basically a PHP client that handles the data transaction layer, um, and then wrapping that inside of Drupal. So, in the case of this project, it doesn't leverage anything like feeds. Um, there's just a custom, you know, we make an API call on Cron, it gets some results back through the API client. Those are objects, and then we, you know, call some functions on those to get the data we out data we need out. And we map that to Drupal entities manually, so it's it's a highly in that case it's a highly manual process. Um, definitely not ideal, um, and it, it, it's hard to maintain. Um, so something like feeds is great because you know you have to create you create a source plugin that defines the data you have and what attributes it has, and then you can map through the Drupal UI or you know configuration how to actually map that data to to an entity, which is a lot better, but you know there's only one-way transactions. So when an order is placed within our our site, you know feeds doesn't have a system for let's upload that order to the remote ERP system. Uh, yeah, and in the case of another project, you know I had to integrate with an ERP system to actually process you know orders for for a customer, and there was no subsystem in place for take this order and send it to the ERP system. You know here's here's a standard mapping. Um, so that was something we had to build out. Um, and it was a lot of custom code, which is Highly unfortunate. I mean, I wish there was a way to, to map that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm glad some people showed up. <laughs>